y'all. Welcome to the next uh, tea tasting. We are tasting green Maho Gion. If I said that correctly, I'm trying. And it's from a tea source out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it says this tea is smooth, medium bodied, um, non astringent, and slightly sweet. Uh, and so I like to uh, start out with looking at the leaves. So here's the leaves. You can definitely pick up on some of the green and some of them are darker. I actually put some leaves, look how long that one is, but you can see how it's um, rolled and that is supposed to be a classic, um, you know, where you can recognize it for this uh, type of tea. So I don't know why, I just love looking at tea leaves and analyzing them. So um, here's the tea leaves after they are brewed. So I always, I don't know why, just a personal preference I love seeing teas when they come out and they are uh, the uh, full leaf. So, um, here's the color of the liqueur. And I haven't got much left in my cup, but it's a very, very pale yellow. And here you can see it in the serving pitcher as well. Leaves in the guy one. I, I just love looking at those details. So here are my tasting notes. This is where we do a lot of learning and thinking. So here's where I tried hard to get the correct um, pronunciation. I could be wrong, I'm not a professional, but uh, the A um, is sounds like aw and O uh, says its own name, O, so uh, ma, ma ho, draw, draw, ma ho, ma ho, ma ho. <laughs> yeah, I've had to sit here and say this over and over. Uh, ma ho, and then uh, e, the I um, says E's name, <laughs> and ah, ah again, so, and, that, and then you have a special way of saying the J, so Jihan, Jihan, I believe. Um, it literally translates into hairy tip or fur tip. So Maho uh, means tiny fuzz in the cup when brewed. So, um, and Jihan uh, literally translates into tip which refers to the shape of the leaves, sharp, full, young leaves. And I think we can definitely see that in here because these leaves are not um, very large. And um, you see the sharp edges. Uh, so and when I think tip, I think of uh, golden tips, but that is not the case. In this one and, and you can see that they're young leaves though definitely young leaves so back to the notes um, it's also known as a misty new top because it's grown in the misty mountains um, and it's also known as whatever that that word is and sometimes the Maho Jihan is uh, one word so um, keep that in mind. They sometimes put them together, but it's uh, because it's commonly grown there. <laughs> that, so um, I'll let you read that. <laughs> the uh, Today's date, September 13th, 2020. It's a green tea. And uh, the website, and I love this. I always, this is my favorite thing is when they tell me where it actually comes from. So this one comes from the, the Hunan province of China um, in that county. I'm afraid to say the counties because I haven't practiced it. 
near that city <laughs> um, next to the Wuling Mountains. And it's made by Mr. Uh, Wong. He, oh, he's got the name, Jihan. Um, who had made fine Yunnan teas for more than 40 years. That's so cool. This is a guy who knows what he's doing. So I looked it up, go to Google Maps. I love doing this. So you see where the uh, red marker is. Um, that's where the city is that was mentioned. And uh, you can see where it is in relation to India, Thailand, uh, Japan is over there. South Korea, learn your Taiwan, learn your geography. Um, but it, it's smack dab in the middle of China there. But um, classic, from what I read online, Maho Jihan is from the Misty Mountains of, you can say that word, and there's the two provinces, which is different. So here we go. So this tea is made in here let me try zooming in that way this way this focus is better hunan um down here and the classic tea for this one is hinan and angio the orange and blue areas so um, you can see it's not quite located where the classic tea is um, these are all the provinces in china that i found online a map which is super handy to have but I love the um, transparency in telling me exactly where this tea is made. It gives it credit. I will put this here from Wikipedia. You can read more about it. Um, it's a, one of the top 10 famous teas in China. Um, and uh, it comes from all those places there most commonly. So um, for processing, the initial Kilgreen process, I always forget to use that word. The first time I heard Kilgreen, I was like, what, what's that mean? Um, and then I was like, oh, I get it, I get it. Um, uh, here's, here's what Kilgreen means, let me scroll down. All green tea is quickly heated, often by pan frying or steaming, and dried to prevent too much oxidation from occurring, which would turn the green leaves to brown and alter their fresh picked flavor. So green tea, all green tea is heated quickly to stop the oxidation. And that's what keeps it green as opposed to, you know, the, the traditional tea that's uh, darker. And that's what's called kill green. Um, so uh, the tea maker, uh, this is not from the website for this tea, but I was just looking at for this tea in general, um, the, what's common. And the, the tea maker vigorously stirs a small amount of tea in the wok using a long handled broom in a standing position. Then the tea maker grabs and shakes the tea by hand with precision that the tea leaves take on the signature pointy shape while delicately keeping all the tea hairs. I did not see any tea hairs. So, so there's the broom. I found th this stuff on two different websites. Here's um, another website that showed uh, him doing a similar thing, but he has some sort of basket instead of a broom. And then um, they do this kind of stuff in the walk to uh, make that uh, pointy shape. And um, I've read that we're supposed to be able to um, quickly recognize this shape and know uh, that it's this type of tea. Um, some other things I found online, it's usually considered king of the green teas. Um, one can easily distinguish uh, this tea because of its long, thin, dark green leaves with straight tips. So straight tips, I gotta go back in. So I guess the tip of this is nice and straight, which it is. Let me look at this one. This one, not as much, but on this end it is. So uh, that's kind of cool to learn about. So um, from the website of this, uh, from T-Source, 
It says it makes a great all day long tea and a marvelous introduction to straight green teas. So this is um, like a, a, a classic green tea, introduction to a classic green tea from China because I have learned that the Japanese green teas are quite different um, from when I'm experiencing it. So um, the, the liqueur on this tea spectrum is definitely yellow, but it's very pale and clear. Um, and I got from another website that bad quality produces dark green colored leaves. So there's a tip in case you don't know that. Okay, when we were tasting it, the aroma flavor um, of smelling, I got, it was weird, but that's what I got. My husband did not get that, but um, the dry leaves, I got floral along with the vegetal, but a lot of floral. But then when uh, the it was brewed and I smelled the wet leaves, it was just pure vegetal. <laughs> it was just a vegetal smell. But they definitely smell different. Um, and the aroma is a, creates a peaceful atmosphere. It's not strong. It's not yummy. Um, there's some teas that I feel like I could just smell on and on and on. This one is just peaceful and calm. Um, I was surprised. I, my first, very first impression was that it had a full body, not a medium full as on the, the package. Uh, and I and then I realized, oh, well, that's what they were referencing and talking about when they they were talking about furry in the liqueur. So if we go back up here and we will recall that maho means tiny fuzz in the cup when brewed. So it's not so much the fuzz on the, uh, the leaves as the fuzz in the cup. And I was like, aha. Now I get it. So, um, yeah, the stringency was very uh, smooth and low. Um, the taste was grassy, and that was it. However, I mean, we couldn't come up with anything else. Um, my husband said green beans, and I said, no, don't taste like green beans. He's like, I'm just trying to come up with something. Um, the taste... The second steep we was much longer. We inadvertently uh, left it too long, and then I got a floral taste that I didn't really like. Um, uh, the finish, I did not have time to decide on the finish with the first brew, but I think it was floral. And then on the third brew, we um, again did it for a short period of time, and I got the, the floral, the lingering floral. The second steep, was longer and it left me with an unpleasant tannic finish that lingered that I did not like. <laughs> I do not like that at all. Um, that's why it is very important not to steep this tea for uh, too long. You, you have to do it for a short period of time. That's why using a gaiwan works so much better. Definitely. Um, I only gave it three hearts simply because... Um, it's an okay green tea, but I'm not a big fan personally of green teas. And when I uh, had that bad finish on the inadvertent long brew, it turned me off. Um, I like teas that taste good even when distracted. <laughs> so I, my favorite tea, I can leave it brewing for a very long time and it never gets that drying tannic icky thing when when I brew it too long. And there's a couple more photos. So I would love to know what uh, you think of this tea and whether or not you like it.